dang, man, this thing looks way different. It's all here. Is that the receipt? <laughs> yeah, for the whole build. Is that 11 bucks, not bad. If you haven't seen it already, guys, we've done the, the body, the frame part. We've done some customizations we did to the frame. We fixed the floor pans. That off, that's off the body and paint. What have you done to this build so far? Because you've done a lot, it looks like to me. So we've got the motor put in. It's a small block Chevy 400. And the transmission I got built is a stage three 700 R4. And we got the transfer case on and the drive shaft. So essentially the powertrain uh, is here with a few odds and ends. The gearbox is on where, oh, you where know, we put the fish plate. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, and uh, just so, day by day. So man. we got an exhaust kit that we're putting on today and we're gonna build from these headers back. Yes, sir. Sweet. Now to be considered a stainless steel, you have to have at least 11% chromium in the steel itself. Now this 409 is a ferritic stainless steel and that goes down to its uh, grain structure and where the body center cubic to face center cubic lattice holds the ferrite science facts. We don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Really the biggest easy thing to tell is it is one is magnetic, the 409. We have a piece of 304 here that is, is non-magnetic. The main thing to get away from it is we still have to purge it. Is it necessary? Probably not because they do use 409 stainless steels where appearance is secondary to make mechanical and corrosion resistance properties. And that's gonna be my excuse today for when I lay some nasty beads. Cause if you peel some back, we got some good fits, we got some bad fits, but before we do anything, let's go over to the hurricane and set it up to well. As always, we like to go and get over the machine and get the settings out of the way so that we can get busy to work. So we got the Hurricane 220 MTSC. We've been using this machine on this entire build. Plasma cut, MIG welded, now we've been TIG welding. We tacked it together with TIG with the hot switch. We took the remote off of the torch itself and we put the foot pedal back on because I do want a little bit more control over my amperage, which is why we'll have that high frequency start going. We don't need an up or down slope because we're gonna control that with our foot pedal. And we went over to the remote down here and we made sure that we switched it over. It does have four T, two T options, but we want that pedal because again we'll have the full control over it we do want the start and end amps to be as low as possible and we have our pre-flow set to half a second and then our post flow set to six we've got the exhaust over here we've got the purge on now we all we've got to do is wait for the purge now there is a formula for how long you're supposed to purge something given how much the diameter of pipe or tubing or whatever you're trying to purge and the length of it and i'll put that formula here but in the meantime i'm just gonna wait we let John pitter patter away on the blazer on the backside. He's gonna put the bumper on so that when we actually weld these out and start putting the exhaust hangers on them, we can really make sure everything lines up nice and pretty. There's probably an easier way to do this. I think a lot of people that do it for a living would do this in pieces and weld it out in pieces. That way there's only a couple of actual, if you wanna call them field welds to make. We're gonna do it all in one. We've got one bottle of argon on one side purging it and we've got one bottle of argon on the back of our machine. I've got it taped up everywhere and then we've got just a couple of holes on the inside, uh, other side of this tube so that we can push all that oxygen out. Everywhere there's a gap or space or anywhere that argon can get released, we've got it sealed up and then we've got it to where we can push that oxygen out. We've got the argon pumping in from the lowest part of our tube. That way it fills up because argon is heavier than the air we breathe. So we need it to fill up and fill up a portion of it. So at the lowest point is where I've got the argon flowing in. And I should at, honestly have a vent point at the highest point, but we'll get by with what we're doing here. If I have to, hell, I'll just up these jack stands and we've got it working for us. Now, like I said, there is a formula for how long you're actually supposed to purge something given the diameter and the length of what you're trying to purge. What you can kind of do to kind of feel whether that air is moving and you're actually pushing some oxygen out, get a little lick to the back side of your hand and put it there so that you can feel a little bit of that cool breeze. You should feel a little bit of cool argon pumping out of there. All right, I think we've waited long enough. So let's go ahead and open up some of these gaps it's nice we're gonna have like a little surprise in, in each one of these fits we had some good fits and bad fits i'm definitely a pipe welder and pipe fitter by trade i haven't got the hang of this exhaust stuff i know it's plus plus these slip-on fittings they didn't always do exactly what what you want but we're gonna weld it out regardless we're gonna try to use some of this 308 filling what wire that we're doing 045 size we can dive into these welds right here See how she, how she purred.
freaking 304 stuff welds like pudding, man. <laughs> it just seems kind of globby and chunky and all that. But to prevent distortion, we are gonna weld a little bit of maybe here, there, everywhere, and then go on these back sides. We got some slip-on joints and some butt welds, um, but we've got the thing purged and then we're rocking and rolling now. We're just gonna flip it over back and forth and weld each side. Give you a closer look at what we're doing with these slip joints. This is what I'm talking about, about that poor fit up. I've got that 045 is just wiggling over here. And of course it's nice and snug. So we've got to, we've got to get pretty tricky with our foot pedal right in here compared to right here. I'll show you the difference in an art shot. So anytime I got this poor fit up, I like to manually pulse my foot pedal and that top edge is what's going to want to run away. So. I might do a little bit of manipulation, so every time I'm, I'm off the foot pedal, on the foot pedal, off the foot pedal, on that foot pedal. And you can kind of take as much time as you need, and you get a lot more control with this manual pulse than if you just go in with like a hot switch and set the machine up that way. It, that's really good if, you, if you're like welding in a roller and you're like really consistent with your torch not dipping your tungsten like that Could probably still get away with the get to that tack with this messed up tungsten i like to say welding with a messed up tungsten is like driving your car with four flat tires you can get from point a to point b but you're gonna mess some stuff up along the way all right moving on to our first butt weld We've got some good gaps, some bad gaps. We'll start with weld on the first one. We're not changing anything on the machine. We're gonna keep everything with the foot pedal and we're gonna be doing just kind of an inch at a time. I'm really gonna probably lay into it a lot more. I wanna see this sink. We've got a nice back purge on there so we should be able to handle it. Man, I feel like there's a fly in every video, man. That dude follows me. Anyway, I managed to swat away a fly and drop one of my FUPA cups, which was really sad. <laughs> Why? But luckily, the owner of this shop has an extra one at hand, so we were able to swap it out. No problemos. Like, compared to that socket weld joint, slip-on joint, whatever you call it, I'm really going to let this puddle soak into the joint. We've got that backing gas, so I want to see some sink. I want to see that, that puddle sink. Oh yeah, that's sinking it in. That's what I want to do on all these butt welds. This weld was mid at best. So we're going to go back to the hurricane and turn the pulse settings on to see if I get a little bit more control. We're going to turn the pulse on into pulse auto. So the percent and the time on is already set for us. We're just going to set the pulse frequency at two pulses per second and see if that helps our control. You know, it's been a little bit slower, but I do feel like I have a lot more control with this pulse. Definitely vibing with the pulse a little bit more than just the straight current. I mean, I know that straight is going right into it and it's punching through and I might could turn up my heat. We're at 75 now with that two pulses per second. I might could slow down the pulses per second to see if I can get a little bit hotter in there, but the pulses were definitely putting a lot of less heat input into it. I think I like that a little bit more, um, but that was with something with a good fit up. We're gonna, next we're gonna try something with a, a little bit of a wider fit up and a little bit trickier, but one tip I'll give you as far as working with like thin wire like this, I pull a new one out. I like to give it a little bend on the end of it. That way when I drop it, on the ground I'm trying to fiddle around and grab it with my freaking fingers I can just simply roll it on the ground to where this is pointing up and now I can grab it now we've got ourselves a bad fit up the only thing good about this bad fit up is that we can at least feel the argon coming out of it but we're gonna change nothing on the machine we just got that foot pedal control and we're gonna try to put a bead on it make sure that we just kind of bridge it across still got that pulse going on And we're just gonna go nice and chilly with it, make sure we're breaking down the edges, but without running back those thin bits of tubing. And that's what it looks like. That was our gap. That escalated quickly. 
it's hard to tell. I get to shine a light in there. I don't have a flashlight other than what's on my phone, but we're getting a bead in there. The bead with the purge kind of looks like nine chrome, to be honest, and that's the only thing I can compare it to, but I'll give you a closer look at how I'm going about this big gap. Apologies in advance for the blurry arc shot, but I'm gonna do my best to walk you through how I'm welding this thin tubing with such a big gap. Uh, I know it's tough to see, but I'm trying to keep that wire in the puddle at all times. I eventually run out, so I'll have to grab more, and that's when I back off my foot pedal so that I have very little amperage that's affecting the puddle. And then as I put the wire back in the puddle, I can step down on my foot pedal and make sure that the wire is there every time I get to the edge. Those edges want to just take off and run on you, and we're just trying to make sure that there's enough wire in that gap. It would probably would have been a little easier to switch to like a 332nd size uh, wire, or even a 16th would have been better than this 045 size wire. But we got it did, we got it done, and uh, you know, it'll hold corn. We've got a ton of welds to make on this exhaust, so I've got to just get after it at this point. And I think I've got the Hurricane dialed in to where I like it to make some aesthetically pleasing welds for you all. At least better than what I have been putting on here. This isn't my bread and butter. I usually like to weld a lot thicker stuff because it's a lot easier to weld. But there's a lot of practice on this exhaust, and we just got after it after this. We had to weld the O2 sensor on. You know, we gotta have these sensors up to make sure we're up to code and everything, so John handed it to me and we just stuck her right on. Had John help me roll things around to speed the process up a little bit. Welding on jacks isn't the best thing uh, I can say to do, but it beats welding it inside the frame. Thanks for watching that episode, y'all. I hope you took some education and some value out of it. I know the welding skills were par at best, but we still got more stuff to do on this K5 Blazer. So if you liked it, please follow, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff because we're gonna be doing another series where we're gonna use the CNC table and a tube bender and do a little bit more to John's Blazer. Gotta clean up the shop a little bit because we've got some other things to do in other builds. If you'd like to see something cool get built on the channel, let us know what you'd like to see and we'll build it. We'll see you on the next one.